Hey guys, so today's video is all about how to get a UK PR and all the steps that are included as a part of it. This is a highly requested video based on all the questions that we get from you guys. So today I will break down on all the steps that are required to stay in the UK permanently based on the kind of profile you might have. We will also talk about where Meher and I are in our PR journey. Hi all, I'm Shashank. I talk about all things finance, study abroad and how to settle abroad. Also, at the end of this video, we will talk about some questions which you guys have sent us in the past few weeks. So let's dive straight in. So I'm going to talk about two specific visas today. Number one, the student visa and number two, the work permit visa. Student visa is the one that we receive after completing a degree in the UK. This could be a one or a two year degree. This is a tier four visa which is given for one or two years based on the kind of course that you are pursuing. Once you complete your degree, you will receive a post study work visa for staying in the country and looking for jobs. You can also use this time to find some internships and work while you are actually looking for a full-time job. The next one I want to talk about is a tier two general visa. This tier two general visa is basically given to you when you want to work for a company. The company sponsors you to get this visa, come and work for them specifically. You might be hired as an existing person who is in the UK working for a different organization but hasn't received their ILR yet or you might be a person who is hired from abroad specifically to fill in that position. I mentioned the word ILR. You must be wondering what ILR stands for it's indefinite leave to remain. So once you complete five years in the country while working for them, say on the tier two visa, you will receive an ILR. So when I say you will receive an ILR, it's basically that you are allowed to apply for the indefinite leave to remain in the UK. This is a one year period that lets you define and decide if you want to eventually get the British passport or not. So the tier two visa is usually given to you for three years period after which you can extend it based on the requirement from the company itself. Usually it's very straightforward because the organization that you are working for will help you or support you extend this three year visa to another two or three years. So you can then eventually apply for your ILR and the passport. Like I previously said, you need five years in the UK on a sponsored tier two visa to actually apply for the ILR. Now you have to make sure that you get this tier two visa from a sponsored organization, right? So you have to check if an organization that you're applying to does actually have the certificate to sponsor or not. Now these certificates are easily available to be seen online. You can log on to these websites and check if a company has the ability to sponsor the visa or not before you apply for them. Currently, like I mentioned, you can apply for the ILR after five years. However, the UK government is currently contemplating increasing this time period from five to eight years, guys. So make sure before you apply for the next degree or the next job, you know what you are getting into. You have to check if it's either five or eight years by the time you get into your application process. You don't want to come here assuming it's actually a five year period after which you can apply for your ILR, but it turns out you need eight years. So make sure keep an eye out on the upcoming changes to the regulations. Now, once you complete the five years, like I said, you can apply for the ILR. But what are the basic requirements for the ILR? Obviously, you can go onto the UK government website and check but here are the basic items that you will need. Number one, you need to pass the life in the UK examination. It's a 45 minute exam in which you need to answer 24 questions. The passing criteria is 75%. That means 18 on 24 questions will let you clear this examination. You get the result of the exam straight after you finish your exam itself. The exam result will be sent to you via an email, but not visible at the center itself. Second thing you need, you obviously need to apply using the files and the papers that you have collected and collated over the last five years of being in the UK. So make sure obviously you will have your current passport, but if there was any other passport that was valid in the last five years is available to you. Make sure all your resident permits that you receive after landing into the country, you have them as well. And then you need to file an application online. 
at the UK government website. The third thing you need to take care of is the specific document you need to provide as a proof that you have not been outside of the country in the last five years or more than a specific number of days. So currently you have to calculate how many days have you been outside of the UK in the last five years of landing into the country on your say tier two job visa. There is a specific threshold of how many days could you have been outside of the country in these five years. If you cross this specific benchmark, guys, you will not be able to apply for the ILR straight on. You have to ensure that these number of days are less than the government set benchmark or the threshold. Now, due to COVID, there were some exceptions that were made by the government. But do your research when you actually end up in the UK, make sure you are keeping a track of all your trips throughout the five year period. Uh, I unfortunately did not. So I had to scan through my entire passport, note down every single trip I made and then get it attested from the organization that I used to work for earlier and also the current organization for the trips I made during the duration of which I was employed by my current organization. So it's a long process. Make sure you keep a track from the very beginning to make, to make it easy for yourself. So what's the benefit of getting an ILR? The biggest benefit of having the indefinite leave to remain is the fact that you do not need a sponsor anymore. You will not be required to be sponsored by your organization. This makes it easy for a lot of candidates to actually change their jobs as well at times because it opens yourself to a lot more jobs to a lot more organizations that did not have the capability or capacity to employ people who require the sponsorship. So once you complete one year of having an ILR, you are then allowed to apply for a British passport explicitly. You have to make sure you do not spend more than 90 days of the 365 days after receiving your ILR if you want to apply for the British passport within the one year period. You can obviously uh, elongate your one year period and apply later on if your number of days have exceeded this 90 day limit. But 90 day is the government set threshold. Okay guys, so just to summarize, you have multiple ways to come into the country. You have student visa and the tier two visa that we specifically spoke about today. The student visa lets you complete your education and then look for a job on the post-study work visa. The tier two visa lets you be employed in the country for an organization that can sponsor yourself and after completing the five years you can then apply for the ILR after completing one year after receiving the ILR you are then allowed to apply for a British passport so that's the entire process guys I hope I hope it helps you understand how you can make your way into the UK but also how you have to maintain everything to eventually get to a position where you can apply for a British passport okay now picking up some specific questions that you guys have sent us. Question number one, can you work on the student tier four visa? Yes, guys, you are allowed to work. You're allowed to work for up to 20 hours a week on the student visa. Question two, how difficult is it to find a job and get sponsored? Now, totally depends on the kind of job you're looking at, but also remember networking. Networking is the key to find a job in the UK. I found my job by networking. Meher initially when she found a job that was via networking through LinkedIn. You won't believe a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, actually moved to the UK last month. He applied for a job while sitting in New Delhi, did all his interviews and procedures remotely and found a job and has now moved to the UK on a tier two visa. So guys, yes, it is absolutely possible to find a sponsored job. It can be difficult but you have to be consistent and persistent. And then you will be able to find something not just to get into the country, but something that you like doing as well. So make sure you network a lot. People here are very conducive to networking. They enjoy talking to you. They enjoy helping out as well. Next question. Is the post-study work visa counted in the five-year timeline to find a job? Unfortunately not, guys. Your post-study work visa period is not counted towards your ILR application and eventually towards your British passport. Your timeline will only start once you are working on a tier two visa as a part of an organization who sponsors you. 
uh, obviously there are some other ways like the entrepreneur visa, investment visa, some other sports visas as well, which we are not covering as a part of this video, but we can talk in detail about them later as well if you want. Uh, next question is, are you allowed dependence on any of these visas? So guys, uh, the answer basically is on a tier two visa, yes, you are allowed to get dependence, but on a tier four visa, it's not allowed anymore unless you are doing a PhD. This rule has recently come into place uh, where on tier four you're not allowed to get your dependents anymore by the time you are applying for your education or your job make sure you again check the regulations if something has been put into place recently or not the uk government currently uh, just so you guys know the uk government is currently looking at reducing the immigration therefore they are bringing in new rules and regulations every now and then so keep an eye out keep yourself updated when you are getting into the process okay guys that's all that's all i wanted to cover as a part of the video today i hope the information that i've shared has been useful for you guys if there are any specific questions any specific visa that you want me to go into the detail of let me know i'm happy to cover the other types of visas as well or talk about any of these in further detail I'll keep an eye out for the questions that you send so that we can customize our next video to support you. Thank you again for listening. Take care, guys.